In the real world, light rays or photons are emitted from a light source, and they bounce around different objects until some of them reach your eye. Out of the seemingly infinite number of photons emitted by a light source, less than 1% of those actually reach your eye, and that number gets much, much smaller the further the light source gets. Now, why make a computer simulate the light going everywhere when we only get to see less than 1% of it? Well, that's exactly what some brilliant computer graphic researchers thought of when creating the first ray traced render engine. The solution they came up with had the camera emit rays of light instead of the light sources. This way, the camera could just shoot out a bunch of rays which would bounce around, and if any of them hit a light source, the camera would know that that area is bright. And the surface the ray hit just before the light is less bright, and the surface before that one even less. So, how does this all relate back to caustics? Well, as we learned earlier, caustics are light that is reflected or refracted through a transparent medium, creating concentrated areas of light. Now, imagine we shoot a ray out of the camera, it bounces off the floor, into the water or glass, and gets refracted, completely missing the light source. Then just add another ray, or a hundred, or ten thousand, and maybe one will hit the light source if you're lucky. We have essentially created a barrier between our camera and our light source, which disperses the light. This makes it so that the render engine or camera essentially has no idea where the lights are, causing a noisy and dark scene, unless you make the camera shoot trillions and trillions of rays, which would work, but would take weeks, if not months to render. So far, no one's figured out how to fix this, but there have been attempts such as photon mapping, which are faster, but still take a very long time. But if it's so impossible, how did they do it for movies and TV shows? Simple. Gobo. A gobo is a revolutionary and cutting edge piece of technology that utilizes advanced photon controlling techniques to bend light and shadows. I'm just kidding, it's literally a piece of cardboard that blocks light. By putting this shape in front of our light, we're casting a shaped shadow onto our surface, and essentially creating what we call a gobo. So, all we would have to do to create water caustics is put a moving caustic pattern in front of our light, and we're done. But, how do we create this pattern in the first place? Well, it's actually pretty simple, and I'll show it off in the free 3D software Blender. The key to it all, a noise pattern called Voronoi. By utilizing two Voronoi textures set to smooth F1 and 4D, we get a shape like this. Now, by taking the values of these textures and finding the difference between them, we get a completely blank screen. Because, well, <laughs> they're exactly the same. But watch what happens when we change the scale on only one of the textures. We get a pattern that looks a lot like water caustics. Now, if you want a longer explanation of this technique, I recommend you check out Polyfjord. Now back to our texture, all we have to do is invert the values so that white is black, and then plug it into an alpha output so the black parts are transparent and let light through. And voila, now by changing the 4D value we get the caustics moving. And it's really that simple and easy. If you have any questions or ideas, feel free to leave them in the comments as I love reading what you guys have to say. Or check out my Twitter where I'm most active and share artwork, ideas and work in progresses on a regular basis. If you enjoyed this video or you learned something, just leave a like. It really helps out my small channel. 